Welcome to morning prayer for Thursday the 9th of September. Uh, my name is Arthur Copeman. I'm the Archdeacon of Newcastle and Rector of All Saints, All Saints Anew out at New Lambton. And it's my privilege and pleasure to lead you in this time of prayer. We'll be fo following the order for Thursday morning found in the Anglican Prayer Book on page 407. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 22, the first 22 verses, and we'll be reading from the Bible in the, the uh, book of Acts, chapter 27, from verse 33. So let's pause and then commence our time of prayer. We meet in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the message we've heard from Christ that God is light in whom there is no darkness at all. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Go up to a high mountain, herald of good tidings to Zion. Lift up your voice with strength, herald of good tidings to Jerusalem. Lift up your voice, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. See the Lord God coming with power, coming to rule with his mighty arm. He brings his reward for the people of God, the recompense for those who are saved. God will feed his flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs in his arms. He will hold them to his breast and gently lead those that are with young. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us spend a, a moment in silence, praying with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Uh, Psalm, Psalm 22, which is found in the prayer book on page 241. Page 241, Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry to you by day, but you do not answer, and by night also I take no rest. But you continue holy, you that are the praise of Israel. In you our forebears trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and they were saved. They put their trust in you and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a worm and no man the scorn of all and despised by the people. Those that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out their lips at me and wag their heads saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him deliver him if he delights in him. But you are he that took me out of the womb, that brought me to lie at peace on my mother's breast. On you have I been cast since my birth. You are my God, even from my mother's womb. O oh, go not from me, for trouble is hard at hand, and there is none to help. Many oxen surround me. Fat bulls of Bashan close me in on every side. They gape wide their mouths at me, like lions that roar and rend. I am poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is like melting wax. My mouth is dried up like a pot's herd, and my tongue clings to my gums. My hands and my feet are withered, and you lay me in the dust of death. For many dogs are come about me, and a band of evildoers hem me in. I can count all my bones, they stand staring and gazing upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. O Lord, do not stand far off. You are my helper. Hasten to my aid. 
deliver my body from the sword, my life from the power of the dogs. O oh, save me from the lion's mouth and my afflicted soul from the horns of the wild oxen. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully restored us in your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that, as he came to, came to share our human nature, so we may be partakers in his divine glory, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 27 and verse 33. Uh, it's a time when Paul is being shipwrecked off the coast of Malta. Just before daybreak, Paul urged all of them to take some food, saying, Today is the 14th day that you've been in suspense and remaining without food, having eaten nothing. Therefore I urge you to take some food, for it will help you survive. For none of you will lose a hair from your heads. After he had said this, he took bread, and giving thanks to God in the presence of all, he broke it and began to eat. Then all of them were encouraged and took food for themselves. We were in all 276 persons in the ship. After they had satisfied their hunger, they lightened the ship by throwing the wheat into the sea. In the morning they did not recognise the land, but they noticed a bay with a beach on which they planned to run the ship ashore if they could. So they cast off the anchors and left them in the sea. At the same time they loosened the ropes that tied the steering oars, then hoisting the foresail to the wind, they made for the beach. But striking a reef, they ran the ship aground. The bow struck and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the force of the waves. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners so that none might swim away and escape. But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and make for the land, and the rest to follow some on planks and others on pieces of the ship. And so it was that all were brought safely to land. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. The hymn of the word from the Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world. And the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed on his name, he has given power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as the only Son from the Father, and from his fullness have we all received, and grace upon grace. Let's pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. The collect for this week. Very appropriate at this time. O oh God, you know us to be set in the midst of so many and so great dangers that by reason of the frailty of our nature we cannot always stand upright. Grant to us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We know at this time that the police report of the order of a 400% increase in uh, domestic violence due to the lockdown. So let's pray for families. God of peace, we pray for families in crisis. Heal the brokenhearted and bind up the wounded, comfort and sustain them in their need. Give them wise and faithful friends, grace to forgive and be forgiven, and courage for the road ahead. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, great God, we do pray for our bishops at this time. We pray that you would sustain Bishop Peter in his leadership of the diocese and give him strength and wisdom for the tasks needed. We pray for bishops Sonia and Charlie likewise, that you would give them wisdom and strength. And to all three bishops, give good health at this time. Keep them safe from COVID in their travels and, and their, their work and sustain them and give them insights into what will be best for the diocese at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to remember the First Nations people of our, peoples of our diocese spread around the different tribes in different places. We pray for a closing of the gap in Australia for full reconciliation, for full recognition for our Indigenous heritage in this country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And our great God, we do commit the COVID situation of our land and particularly of this diocese to you, uh, praying, Lord, that uh, vaccines would be rolled out, that they would be effective, uh, that somehow this pandemic might be brought to an end. We particularly pray for those working in hospitals as the numbers there increase, that you would sustain and strengthen them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we pray, pour your grace upon our Cath Christchurch Cathedral in Newcastle, the Dean, Catherine Boyer, and all uh, worshipping in that place, that you would be sustaining and strengthening the ministry of that place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pause to commend to you any we know to be in particular need at this time, praying that you would sustain and strengthen them, you would show them your love, give them your peace, and heal them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord and Heavenly Father, you've brought us safely to this new day. Keep us by your mighty power, protect us from sin, guard us from every kind of danger, and in all we do this day, direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace equip us with everything good, so that we may do his will. And may he work in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me to pray today.